Hello, and welcome to Techtastic's uh, video series, Optimizing Business Efficiency. I'm Brett Cernak, and today in this first uh, episode of this video series, we're going to be discussing applying Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation to information assets. With that, we're going to be discussing information assets why they're so important to a business, as well as the fact that they are an asset and how we can better think of how these flow through our businesses, as well as how we can then go ahead and apply Lean Six Sigma and explain what Lean Six Sigma is in a nutshell, along with what hyper automation is in a nutshell. And then we're going to go through and discuss as to how we combine those a little bit to really optimize our business processes in our business. Additionally, we're going to be talking about cost and value of information assets. And finally, we have a case study that we're going to be using throughout this video series where we apply Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation. We're going to show you the cost and value today, uh, what happened before and after we applied Lean Six Sigma. Sigma and hyper automation. So if we talk a little bit about uh, information assets and the cost of uh, two companies when they are not uh, being properly managed or poorly managed, they that will come to companies at a great cost. As a matter of fact, uh, MIT Sloan studied and found out that there is a lot of loss opportunity here when you're not managing your information assets. Well, as a matter of fact, companies will lose on average 20% of their revenue due to improperly managed information assets and poor data quality. Additionally, if you have poor data quality, managers, executive level owners of businesses cannot make informed decisions on where to move their company to next or what markets they should be going to or what new products they should be using or where even an in, in issue might be coming up in a project, uh, say if they're a fabricator or uh, in construction, if you have this inaccurate data, it, it, it's hard. You're more you're set more in a reactive. You're setting your business in more of a reactive state than in a proactive state. So it's very important that we have that we're managing these information assets quite well. Additionally, and this is where Tectastic uh, really we we push pretty hard in is in efficiencies of information assets. When it's poorly managed, it, there's a lot of costs involved with the information assets in creating them, in collecting the data, uh, also in um, the quality of them. Now. MIT Sloan also did a study and found out that up to 50% of an employee's time is wasted due to dealing with mundane tasks and also quality issues or correcting issues inside of information assets. So if we have a way to process this, to, to manage these and process these information assets better and to leverage some technology, we can really take care of a lot of these costs and really help our businesses become more efficient, increase some margins, and really start to become uh, more competitive in the mar marketplace. Now, if we discuss about the importance of information in modern business and managing these assets, what we're going to find out here, and here's some stats to with this, is that when we use information assets, it companies that do that will typically outperform their fe their peers by 85%. Additionally, businesses that leverage their technology for these information assets and improve the processes uh, and get those insights will usually decrease their overall costs across the board by about 10%. Also, the data-driven companies are 23 times more likely to acquire customers than their peers. And then finally, Investors are also taking note of this, and so they are ranking companies that are info savvy a bit higher and companies that have a Q value or, or companies that are info savvy will typically have a Q value of nearly two times greater than the market average. So it's pretty safe to say 
and, and to think of that information is an asset. And why we say that is because it does have a cost and a value to an organization, just like tangible assets. And, and But it does have a couple additional properties too to it, such as it can improve decision-making. It can create a competitive advantage. We can use it to generate uh, revenue or cost savings with it. So now to help us think a bit more of information as an asset or, or is an asset, it's best I usually like to best think of it as a raw material flowing through a manufacturing plant. Other people have said, think of it as a raw material flowing through a supply chain, whichever one. But the great thing is, is when you start to think of it in this way, it's a lot easier for you to picture on how we can use Lean Six Sigma methodologies and improve workflows to reduce costs and increase value to these information assets. So information assets, the raw material is of the digital age. So the asset, these information assets are the building blocks of modern business. And just like raw materials, they have to be properly managed and utilized. When they're poorly managed, as we discussed earlier, they're going to create a lot of inefficiencies and cause us to do some in, incorrect decisions. And when we have them managed well, it will really help drive our business and our competitiveness. So when we treat them as a valuable resource, we it'll lead us to be better optimized business processes and improved outcomes. So in this analogy of raw materials flowing through a manufacturing plant, we need to think of this as our computer screens are the new manufacturing hub. When you're out on a manufacturing floor, workers usually have a hub in which they work in. And there, it's usually a part of the floor that is kind of sectioned out for them. So when we start to view this, we need to start to think of this in ways like our computer screen is now the production floor of that hub. The mouse and keyboard are the worker moving around, actually touching the tools or touching the raw material. So the applications on our workstations, such as... Excel and Word and your EP system. These are the machines of this new manufacturing hub. We must think of file storage and databases and, and shares and file shares the same as warehouses of information assets. This is where the inventory of information assets are stored. Whenever we see a, an employee going ahead and deleting or backspacing or rerunning reports, they're, these are signs of rework or information scrap, as, as what we like to call it sometimes. It means that someone had to rework something. And we'll get a little bit more into one of the later videos about rework. On average, the office worker, when they're typing on their keyboard, actually typing on it or, or moving their mouse around, they make anywhere from 1% to 5% error. Now, there is a rule that is called the 110-100 rule which means that it costs you a dollar to produce something with no defects. It costs you $10 to produce something with a defect, go back and change it before it goes out the door or correct it. And it will cost you $100 once it goes off to the customer for the customer to return it, you to correct it or send them a new one, whatever it might be. These, that same rule can be applied to information assets. So if an employee is spending or is making one to 5% in errors, and we apply the 110 100 rule to it, they are spending anywhere from 10% to 50% of their time correcting errors that were made in information assets. And again, we'll get more into it in the rework video. And that percentage is based on them actually working at their keyboard. We're not going to be counting meeting time or, or things like that. We're, we're talking to actually working at their station on, on the information. Half their time, it, it's very easily to see that half their time they are redoing work. So we really need to make sure that we are properly managing these information assets to improve this overall efficiency, as well as to help build value to these information assets. So Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation. Now, if you're in the manufacturing world, you're most likely, you know what Lean Six Sigma is. 
you might be uh, a black belt or a champion in it. It, it, it. it does come from the manufacturing world, but for, because this video could be going to anyone, I uh, just want to touch base on what Lean Sigma, Sigma is. So it is a methodology for improving efficiency and reducing waste during the manufacturing process. And information is that raw material that we're collecting, we're bringing in, we're refining it, we're working it. We are manufacturing information in the end. And it Lean Six Sigma is a combination of two methodologies. There's Lean, which was created by Toyota. And the point of Lean is to try to remove waste by removing extra steps, by trying to remove rework by trying to make it easier for people to access inventory, to do their job, to reduce waiting time and to go through that way. Six Sigma, how they would streamline their operations, it was developed by Motorola and it was to reduce variation of the product. So with Six Sigma, we're looking more at quality, but in process of working on that quality, we're also going to be streamlining our operations to make it easier for employees to get the same result and to improve the quality. Now, both of these, when we, so we combine them. And so Lean Six Sigma and them separately focus on a continuous improvement. It's not just a one and done. We're going to constantly be looking at it, eliminating unnecessary steps, reducing the variability as much as we can during the production process. Now, hyper-automation is a technology. So hyper-automation was coined by Gartner in 2019, and it's an integration of advanced technologies. So it's a bunch of advanced technologies that have been kind of linked together. And all these technologies have been around since uh, usually about 2001, 2003, and they were all kind of separate. But people started to use them in conjunction and to really leverage them all together. And so the advanced technologies that are used together are things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotic process automation, business process automation, in order to automate repetitive tasks, freeing up an employee's time to focus their time on more value-adding activities. It helps really increase their activity their efficiency and accuracy. It improves your speed of business. And when we use this in combination with Lean Six Sigma, it'll further optimize and streamline the process. So as I said, combining in Lean, combining Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation is going to do things like help us identify bottlenecks in the information flow. It's going to enable us to do real-time analysis and monitoring of the information flow. We're going to be automating manual processes and trying to reduce human error as much as possible to really eliminate that variation of our information assets. Managers and executives and business owners will get better decision making. We're going to get more productivity out of our systems and the employees. We're also going to reduce waste. The big thing is too, we're going to improve our customer satisfaction because we're going to have faster response times. We're going to get that information back to them faster time to market for what they're looking for. If you're in an industry where you have regulatory or compliance, we can help with that by using Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation because it'll help automate some of those regulatory requirements. It's going to give you a much better competitive advantage in the market as well. So the as I said before, information assets have a cost and value to them. So to help you understand the cost of information assets, here's some examples for you. So there's the cost of acquiring the information, whether it be we're going to be doing data entry in it, we're going to be going out on the web and, and researching it, or 
pulling it from someone else. Maybe sometimes even you're buying some of the information from people. But in most cases, most businesses are usually doing data entry or researching the information, or maybe you're calling a vendor about information. There's also a cost associated with storing and maintaining the information. So we have server maintenance costs. We have software license costs. There's a cost to rework that is caused by inaccurate or outdated information. Again, we discussed a little bit about that, that when we have manual entry going on or humans involved, they're making an average of one to 5% errors in it that then has to be corrected. And then there's also a cost of risk. Now the cost of risk, uh, when we're going there, that's usually for something that is uh, trying to decrease costs in variation. And there is a cost associated with that for the risk if something were to happen to that information asset that is trying to help you reduce your operating expenses or helps you with your operating expenses. So determining the value of information assets. So we can value this by what, what advantage are we getting by the decision-making? What is the increased revenue through improved sales or what's the potential value of it through sales or operations we're going to have reduced costs through optimized processes and minimized rework so if we're reducing the time there that is adding value to it so if so if you reduce say something took someone an hour to complete and now and we're and that without that information asset. But if they have the information, now it can only it only takes them 15 minutes. We've saved that time. There's added value to that as well. Then there's also a risk value. I know I talked about a cost risk before, but risk value is associated with information assets that, that are part of generating revenue as opposed to information assets that are trying to reduce revenue, or I mean, reduce operating expenses, sorry. So that's a little bit the difference there. So sometimes information assets can have both. Sometimes they can only they only have one. As I said before, we do have a case study throughout this video series. And the case study is about a quote process that a manufacturing firm uses. They have production items, but they do also have a customized uh, fabrication product they make at, where you have various options on it. And so they have to produce a quote for these specialized fabricated items that they're making. And so we're going to take a look at what the cost and value is before they apply Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation. So throughout, you're going to see us talk about these quote costs. And we average the labor at about $30 an hour. Each quote beforehand was taking 2.76 hours to complete. And this included the rework time. So each quote was costing them an 88 cents. Now, the value on it was each quote averaged about $7,500. The average win rate of each quote was 15%. And so when we do the math here a little bit, so that means every quote they were putting out they were looking at an approximate value of 1125 but wait they also had unfortunately they also had a poor cybersecurity and this put them at about a 20% risk 24% risk of losing this asset so if they lose it they would have to go back and, and recreate it now losing it can be uh, in the way of someone deleting it, could be in the way of the hardware fails, could be in the way that they are hacked or get a virus, whatever. They, they lost it in some way. And so when we add that to it, now the value is all the way down to $846 is the value of every quote that they're putting out there. So when we take off the cost and uh, from the value, each quote that they're creating has a net value of $763.12. Now, if we go to what their cost was after Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation, after we applied this, we have some new costs here and reduced cost. So the quote labor costs, again, the, the cost is $30 an hour. Each quote though now takes three, 
or I'm sorry, each each quote now takes 0.39 hours, including rework. That was down, that's down from 2.76 hours. So now the cost of labor on each quote is $11.70. They do have to pay a licensing fee for their hyper automation, which is 24, which averages to about $24.71. So now the cost that they're looking at for every quote is $36.41, uh, a bit of a decrease there from the $82, $83 that they were looking at for. So now we have to add the value in to get a better picture here. With having Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation and with reducing the time it takes them to get a quote out, again, the quotes are still the $7,500 there. They managed to uh, ratchet up ratchet up their potential win uh, rate slightly. Uh, hopefully this will increase even more, but they were able to bring it up a little bit because of this, because they were able to get those quotes out to everyone faster. So now the sales rep can go ahead and follow up on that a lot easier. The uh, potential client has it sooner. They can make an informed decision on it sooner and, and helps their business. So now their potential win rate went up to about 17.5%. And the average value of each quote now is it went up from, I think we were just over 1100, I think it was 1125 to uh, $1,312 cents in, or $312.50. Additionally, they improve their cybersecurity by changing where they're storing their information. And they they're now their average risk of asset loss, of information asset loss, is 5%, down from that 24%. So now the average value, after we assess the risk, after we change that, that win rate uh, slightly, we're looking at $1,246.88. So now the $6.88. So that gives us a net value of $1,210.47. Or which increased our net value by 58.6% for this asset. Again, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into this throughout this series, and you're going to see how this all works, uh, how we flowchart this out, how we uh, apply, where how we shave off this time a bit. We're going to be discussing that. So be sure to stay tuned. It's a very interesting case study. I, I really suggest everyone to make sure that they're following already. And uh, if you want to discuss it before everything comes out, please let me know. More than happy to discuss it more with you. To recap the importance of information assets, information is a very uh, valuable asset that can directly impact a company's success. When it's poorly managed, it will lead to lost opportunities and incorrect decisions and inefficiencies in a business. When you use the techniques such as Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation and combine them, it will greatly help improve your information flow and increase the value of your information assets to your company. So implementing these methodologies and this technology can really help optimize your information and give you a competitive advantage. Organizations that prioritize and invest in the improvement and continuous improvement of the information flow will reap long-term benefits and see a positive return on investment. Thank you very much for being part of our presentation on optimizing business efficiency, applying Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation to information assets. We hope you found some valuable information in this presentation. And if you are someone that is ready to start uh, your digital transformation by leveraging your technology, we'd love to talk to you. You can go to sixsigma.techtastic.com to set up an appointment where we can discuss how hyper automation can help your business. We do have another video coming up in this video series, optimizing business efficiency, applying Lean Six Sigma and hyper automation to rework. I hope everyone Again, I really hope everyone enjoyed this and thank you very much for uh, taking the time to see this presentation.